Our brand new cycle of basic space lands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week so far. Uh, it's been very busy for me, but I'm very excited to be jumping into a little bit of gameplay today. So uh, we're trying something a little bit different. Normally, um, when I when I think of humans in the current standard metagame, I, I tend to think a little bit more Mardu humans. Uh, we've got quite a few decks running around with the Mardu list, um, and it's very, very good. It's very powerful. Uh, in searching through some deck lists this morning and trying to determine what I wanted to play, uh, I did kind of land on a humans deck, but I found an Esper humans list that I really, really enjoy. Uh, I've actually played a good bit with this deck. Not necessarily going to win every single game as, as far as what I have seen, um, but it does some really interesting things that I want to talk about. Uh, and, and when I say this as an overarching statement, what I mean by that is it, it has the aggro uh, elements of a lot of the humans' lists, uh, but it also has a little bit of a control element that, that I really, really like. So we're going to get to see that hopefully played out a little bit as well, uh, but certainly as we go through the list. So uh, the, the curve does start at 2 here, so Hero of Precinct 1, one of the really, really big uh, flagship cards for this list. Anytime you cast a multicolored spell, you get a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Uh, obviously, as you can see, the majority of our deck, not all of it, but the majority of it, uh, does uh, fit that build. A lot of it is multicolored stuff, and so anytime we play one of those spells, we get that 1-1. One, one. Now, what I love about that is that happens whether the spell is countered or not. <clears throat> and so uh, essentially you're just adding value. Even if you get countered, you, you still get a little 1-1 one, one creature. It's not a lot, but it does ba add up very, very quickly in a deck like this. So very happy with that. Uh, General's Enforcer here, uh, really to protect some of our legendary humans, uh, in particular Tessa. Uh, as well as the general here are two cards that are really, really great for protection. Uh, it's also just a nice 2-3 for 2, which is just kind of good value. It, it matches up well against a lot of other things. Uh, but on top of that, it can also spit out white human uh, soldiers uh, on top of exiling cards out of the graveyard, which is really, really crucial against a lot of decks right now. Uh, we were in, in practicing this list, I, I was up against a Dance of the Mance deck, uh, and it was, it was rough. So this actually did come in handy that time. Uh, very, very good card. Uh, to look at some control pieces here, Dire Tactics. Not a not a leap for this deck at all. Uh, we we obviously are going to have a high capacity of humans out on the field, hopefully. Uh, and so this is just two mana exile a creature, which is very, very good uh, at instant speed nonetheless. So very happy to see three of those in here. Uh, Thought Erasure as a four of. This is one of the first kind of inklings that we're getting of this isn't just your standard, you know, aggro list. Thought Erasure has no place in an aggro list. However, uh, when you've got things like Hero of Precinct 1 where you get a 1-1 one, one creature, you get to pull a card from the hand, and you get to fix the top of your deck a little bit, all of a sudden for 2 mana you are getting a lot, a lot of value. Uh, and so this actually comes in handy quite often. Uh, obviously not always going to be playing it on 2 depending on what we've got in our hand, but the idea would be to get Hero out first, then play the Thought Erasure. Uh, General Kudro. Pretty obvious include, it's a lord for all of our humans. Uh, when it or another human enters the battlefield, we also get to exile a card from the opponent's graveyard. Uh, so again, seeing that General Enforcer kind of uh, in tandem with General Kudro really, really helps us kind of manage the graveyard. That's something that we have to do in, in the current standard metagame. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance, a really, really great card. It not only spits out a 1-1 one, one and is an enchantment, which gives us a little bit of a different axis to kind of attack on, uh, but whenever a creature you control dies, you drain a life. Uh, what's great about that is obviously we've got a lot of creatures, uh, and so you know we're spitting out tokens, doing that kind of stuff. Anytime any one of those dies, we gets to we we get to drain a life, uh, which is really really good. Now in tandem with things like Tessa, we get to double up on those triggers. So uh, anytime this triggers, we get an extra trigger because it, uh, a, an ability was triggered because of a creature dying. <clears throat> uh, creature tokens also, uh, with Tessa out, get Vigilance and Lifelink, which is a really nice way to kind of keep yourself alive as well as remain on the defensive. Uh, two Tessas in this list. Uh, on top of that, we have Kaya's Wrath, uh, which is really interesting. So, uh, destroy all creatures, <clears throat> so it's a sweeper. Again, something you wouldn't expect in a humans list, but uh, you gain life equal to the number of creatures destroyed this way uh, that you control. Uh, and so ideally that's going to be a good bit. Anytime something dies, that triggers again. 
Uh, with Bastion of Remembrance out, we get to essentially combo kill our opponent if we get the right setup. Uh, certainly that's not what we're going for, but that can actually happen. It's very, very sweet. Uh, some more control elements. Oath of Kaya here uh, is a great way to kind of mitigate some damage on, or, or excuse me, get rid of maybe a Planeswalker or a creature on the board and then gain yourself a little bit of life. Uh, we don't have Planeswalkers that this is protecting, but it still is a very, very useful card in this list. Elspeth Conquers Death, another really, really nice control card. It gives us a way to exile permanents on the opponent's side that are three or greater. Uh, and not only that, but brings something back. Uh, we've got a lot of great hits to bring back, so this is really, really nice. Uh, Icon of Ancestry, kind of an obvious include uh, as a three of here. It continuously not only buffs our creatures, but uh, it gives us a way to continuously look for more, uh, which is really, really nice because this deck, uh, being as cheap as it is, tends to run out of gas at some point, so Icon really helps us there. Uh, and then the last card here is Elite Guard Mage. So again, a bit of an obvious include, a 2-3 Flyer gives us a little bit of that uh, interaction in the sky, also gains us life and draws us a card, so very, very powerful. Uh, that's pretty much the list. As far as lands go, if I'm not mistaken, we are at 24. <coughs> We've got two Castle Lockflane, to Ardenvale and to Vantress. We've got a lot of castles in this list, which do come in handy. Uh, one plains, one island, and one swamp. Uh, four hollow fountain, four godless shrine, four watery grave, and then one of each of the temples. No fable passage, nothing like that. Uh, try to avoid tap lands in this one, but there are actually, you know, a, a, new, a number of occasions where it's kind of okay. Uh, turn one, especially turn three, every once in a while, you kind of you you get yourself into a position where it's kind of okay to drop out. Uh, you know, a two uh, a two drop on turn two, and then on turn turn three, you get to kind of do it again. Uh, so <clears throat> it actually works out pretty well. Um, we are dropping frames a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll try and requeue up. Uh, unfortunately, that happens every once in a while. So hopefully this uh, this fixes it. Uh, just want to mention. Uh, to everybody out there, uh, we really do appreciate the support lately. Um, I, I'm i continuously astounded. I'm a, I'm a big analytics guy, uh, and being that YouTube gives us a lot of analytics, um, it's really fun to kind of look through and see the progression uh, in the last month or two, uh, and it certainly is much appreciated by all of you. So thank you, seriously, to all of you guys. It, it means quite a lot. Uh, this is a bit of an interesting hand. We're lacking that blue mana. Um, we do have a nice hero with a backup dire here, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna try this. It's a bit of a sketchy keep, uh, no doubt. So we'll we'll hopefully be able to draw a land here, specifically a blue land, so we can get to that elite guard mage, which oh, such a good card. Um, okay, well that's not one, but that's okay. Um, Bastion's actually good. I'm gonna keep that on top. Uh, that just gives us a good solid three drop. Uh, depending on what the opponent does, it, it gives us an option here. Um, let's go ahead, let's just drop this and we'll drop that hero now. <coughs> um, and then next turn, we'll, we'll see what we need to do. We may, um, it looks like we'll probably just Bastion. Uh, certainly they're gonna be able to play something pretty big on their turn. Uh, but again, that's why we have the Dire Tactics back up, so I'm quite okay with that. Uh, looks like classic Simic Ramp, which is very strong right now and going to get stronger uh, without a doubt. That's actually nice uh, as well. Let's go ahead and do this and we'll do this. Uh, not a super exciting play, unfortunately, but we are kind of in setup mode uh, for the first few turns. That tends to be the case with this list, uh, unless you can really, really get um, you know, strong aggro hand, which this, you know, we had some pieces, but not, not, not what we wanted for sure. Uh, that's fine. Um, we can, again, dire tactics that if we need to, and that's totally fine by me. That's very helpful. Um, and I think in that case, this changes the math a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Against this mutate deck, we are you know, hoping to get max value off of our dire tactics, but we also have to be quite careful because, you know, if they um, if they have the right stuff, we're going to be in big, big trouble. Uh, Asterix would be really not good um, just because they're going to get two for one value minimum uh, off of that. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll do what we can. Uh, luckily against these decks, Kai's Wrath, again, kind of gives us an out. We've, we, what's, what I think is really great about this deck is that we almost always have an out. Um, it's not always perfect, it's not always amazing, but we, we do have one. 
uh, which is just just sweep the board. Um, and we get more value off of that, obviously, than the opponent by a long way, despite losing quite a number of creatures. Um, here they get to kill the Bastion, um, but they do leave themselves open here to double dire tactics, which is kind of nice, uh, to be honest. Um, so we do have to shock ourselves here, but I think we're going to take the opportunity, or do we just Elspeth Conquers Death? Hmm. Um, not 100% sure. I don't think we do. Um, I think we're going to double dire tactics here. Uh, the other option would be to play Path of Ancestry, but I don't think we want to. I think we just want to get all these mutators off the field that way. Um, we've got a clean attack here, but also they don't get extra value off of, you know, multiple mutates or anything like that. So we will see. Hopefully that was the right play. We do get to play the icon this coming turn and really kind of go ham. Um, we do know now they don't have lands in hand. Okay. Uh, good thing about this is it's a great target for Elspeth Conquer's death. So, um, not too upset actually. Uh, let's go ahead and do this now. Uh, we will play out the land here, and we'll just attack with our, uh, our elite guard mage. This is definitely annoying, um, but at least we got rid of the Sterex. I think that's a pretty big one to get rid of for sure. Uh, this is going to kill the Elspeth Conquer's death. I don't actually mind that all that much. Uh, it's annoying, but it's not really the worst thing in the world, um, because we don't really have much in our graveyard anyway. Uh, so, sure, that works. Um, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're very, very correct in spreading this damage out a little bit, uh, at least as best they can, so I think that's smart on their end. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. Let's go ahead and play this. We're just kind of flooding the board at this point. They're not going to be running sweepers, most likely, at least. Um, and so I feel more confident, at least, in doing this. We'll just attack here with the Guard Mage. Um, I don't think there's a reason. This does have reach, actually. That was a mistake. Um, whoops. <laughs> uh, always forget that this has reach. That was a bit of a quick play on my end. Sorry, guys. Um, but that's okay. We will uh, we'll see what they want to do. Um, I was just getting something in the graveyard for our future Elspeth Conquers Death. So, like, obviously. <laughs> oh, man. Um, hopefully, like I said, you guys are having a fantastic week. Let me know what your plans are. Uh, I would love to know, what are you planning this weekend, this upcoming weekend? Are you doing anything fun? Are you hanging out with anybody? Are you playing some magic? Doing anything magic-related? I hope so. Um, Risen Reef, huh? Sure. Um, so now we, I mean, they're very well set up for sure. Um, but to be honest, we kind of are also. Uh, and so I'm not super upset about that. We're going to play out this, I think. That seems like the right thing to do. Um, and let's go ahead and, ooh, we missed. That's okay. Um, all right. So we're just going to start swinging in, I think. Uh, we kind of have to be aggressive here because otherwise they're going to outvalue us based on what this deck is. Uh, and so I think this is correct to to do this. Uh, we also get Risen Reef off the field, which is very, very important, um, and get them to a point where, you know, lethal damage is coming uh, for sure. Now they can, uh, they can escape a Uro here, which is going to be really, really good for them. Um, but we've got Icon of Ancestry to help dig us into some stuff if we need to, so feel okay about that. Okay. They get to kill one of our Icons. Sure. That definitely hurts us. Um, does that really, like, solve their problem, though? I'm not sure. Um, it gets them out of lethal range, for sure, but we will see. They get to draw a card. Hope hopefully they don't hit a land, but that's fine. All right. Let's see what we can do here. That's a card. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and drop this out. We get a couple extra two twos out of the game, which is nice. Um, let's go ahead and activate this. Uh, if we happen to get another, you know, 
something interesting. Well, that's something that we also get to play, so that's fine. All right, uh, stacking up on those those two twos, which is good. So if we block, they block there and there. We get six damage in, right? Don't think that's good enough, but I will attack with these three. We're gonna get two damage in. It's not a lot. I get it. Um, but I kind of don't want to lose the heroes here. Um, okay. Get two damage in. We've got more than enough blockers that we could uh, easily block any oncoming, oncoming, oncoming attacks. I, I swear I can speak. Um, <laughs> and next turn we can obviously kind of go ham. Okay. Might just double up with the uh, General's Enforcers here. Uh, they're going to take one of them out, but that keeps them from killing like three of our 2-2s, two for instance. If we were to triple block with the 2-2s, two they get all of them. Here they get one creature. Uh, so I think that that's the most effective way to block. Probably to be safe, it would have been smart to have added a 2-2, two -two, but in this case it kind of worked out. Um, just in case, if they had a combat trick or something like that, you, you never know, but, um, I think that was the correct block. Okay, we get to kill the other icon, which is very good. Um, but again, we've gotten quite a lot of value off of the icons already. Um, certainly hurts, but hopefully we will be able to get there still. Um, and this is what I mean by they're going to outvalue us at some point, unfortunately, with all of these mutates, unless we have a way to deal with the board, uh, which right now we do not, obviously, they're going to be able to to do whatever they need to do. Bastion's actually quite nice, though. Uh, I will say that's very, very good, just because now anytime anything dies, we've got stuff. Granted, if they've got any mutator, they've got a way to deal with it, but that's fine. Uh, let's get an Uro out of here. Just so, you know, in the future, obviously, we've got something. Um, we're attacking all. So this is 11 damage, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay. I mean, at the very least, we're pushing, we're pushing pretty heavily here. Um, that's... That's all we I think we can ask for, uh, given the current state of things. But they obviously, I think, um, my guess is eventually they're going to outvalue. Granted, two scribes at the bottom is nice. Um, they probably should have done that first, but that's okay. We'll see what they do. Um, okay. Is that That's not actually all that good, is it? They get to bounce Gilded Goose, maybe? Sure. Or they just get to like untap something, which is pretty good. Um, but again, anytime they kill, they block and kill a creature, we're draining for life. So like, it's kind of okay. Um, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Didn't think too much about that, but that's actually okay. Oh, there it is. Or Kaya's Wrathing. <laughs> I love it. All right, yeah, gain your three. It's totally fine. And there it is. <laughs> I can't believe we got there. Heck yes. That's what we were looking for. Oh, finally. That was sweet. All right. Um, so I will say, I, I like I said at the beginning of this video, I've playtested this deck a good bit already. Uh, I played a handful of games with this before jumping on. And... As, as cool as that interaction that we just saw is, that never happened to me in playtesting. That's the first time that we've been able to, to win off of Akaya's Wrath, uh, which is so sweet. Um, so I'm, I'm stoked. That, that, made me, uh, that, that made my day. That just made me so happy. Uh, all right, let's jump into uh, the next game here. Uh, this is a keep, but it's a bit of an interesting one again. Um, this time we don't really need the color we i mean we need blue eventually um but we've got a nice two three here uh a very nice two three in fact so uh and they are on all they are on a mulligan goodness gracious um do we keep the bastion 
Ugh. I'm going to say yes. Um, that might be incorrect. Honestly, the correct thing, I think, would be to dig for a blue land uh, or just a fifth land so we have Elspeth Conquers Death Mana, but eh. It's fine. Everything's fine. They did tap for black. Uh, don't know if they're actually going to use it. Nope. Okay, cool. Well, sure. Um, <laughs> General's Enforcer out. Next turn, hopefully just dropping the General. <clears throat> uh, and then we can start playing out these Bastions. Uh, looks like probably a Mutate deck as well. Just um, Sultai Mutate, maybe. Uh, happy to see that they're on a mulligan, honestly, because these Mutate decks are rough. Uh, ooh, does that change things? I think it kind of does. Um, let's attack in. Um, I think that changes things slowly. I mean, it's a bit greedy, but that way when we drop the general, we get an extra 1-1. One, one. Um, really an extra 2-2 two, two because of the general, but we'll, uh, we'll see what the opponent wants to do here. This may very well not be a Mutate deck also, so I... That could be misevaluation, um, but we'll see. Um, what's what's a little bit scary? These mutate decks used to run, uh, and some of them still do certainly, but they used to run uh, Umori as their companion, and so you kind of always knew, like, oh, okay, you're you're most likely a mutate deck, or you know, you're the weird like instant only deck and all that kind of stuff. Like that's really really good to know. Um, unfortunately, we don't know that right now, and so. Uh, it does make things a little bit more challenging, but that's okay. Um, worth noting, at some point, we need to start exiling these uh, Uros. Um, I'm not 100% sure that needs to happen right this second. Um, and maybe that's wrong, I don't know, but we're going to try for this. Uh, oh yeah, duh. This just gives us a way to exile it. Well, that makes it easy. We get the best of both worlds. Um, keeping them off of these Uros is going to be really crucial. Um, and now anytime we play a human, we get that opportunity. Just to make sure, is this win enters the battlefield? So Bastion does trigger that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, opponent just gave up. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, I guess they just didn't have much, uh, unfortunately, but that's okay. We will, uh, we'll jump into game three. Uh, we're already at 22 minutes, so we're not gonna we're not gonna jump into an extra game for that. Um, despite the fact that that was a relatively unexciting game, uh, they played two Uros and then gave up. Uh, but hey, we are at two wins with this deck. Um, and I think what I like about this one so much is that it does have a lot of built-in tech. I mean, it's got a lot of the graveyard hate. It's got hand destruction. Uh, it's got wrath effects. Like, it's pretty cool that we get to kind of do it all uh, a little bit. Um, as much as I would love to keep... If this was like a black land, we would be set. But I don't think we can keep that. Um, this is so bad as well. But I think we kind of have to keep it. I don't think we can um, go down again. We're going to put one of these guard mages back. Um, certainly hate to do that. Uh, and we'll lead off on the hollowed fountain with the hopes that we hit either a black land or, you know, something playable. But chances are probably not. Uh, this is a very... <clears throat> Very bad start for us, no doubt. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yep. Let's just do that. Interesting, interesting. That's an interesting card in general. Um, how many times can I say interesting? Uh, sorry for the frame rates. Whoa, they just dropped heavily, heavily. Uh, we may jump out of this game. We're going to be losing regardless. Let's jump out. <clears throat> they win it, uh, I think, regardless. I mean, we can get this out, but that's about it. They've got a tapper. Um, we'll uh, we'll jump into a third. Uh, unfortunately, those frame rates just tanked. Uh, and I certainly don't want you guys to be watching crappy footage. So let's go ahead. Let's do it. Uh, we're almost at our level 80 also, which is kind of exciting. I've never completed a full mastery thing, so this is a bit of a first. Um but that's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I don't love it, but we're going to keep it. Uh, I don't want to go down if we don't have to. Uh, this is a Yorian deck. Interesting. Bant Yorian, Sultai Yorian. 
Uh, we're going to lean on the black because um, if we get like a thought scour or something, well, we wouldn't have it, I guess. Never mind. I was thinking it'd be nice to have that, but not really the case. Um, we'll do this just on the off chance we need to die our tactics. Um, I kind of doubt it, but uh, maybe. Um, dire tactics does actually get rid of that at some point, which is kind of nice. Um, sure. I think I'll let that happen. I'm going to save this for something a little more substantial than Fibblethip. Despite the fact that they get to draw cards, that's very good. But, uh, let's pay two here. Uh, let's actually play out the icon. Um, solely because I kind of want to see what we can get in their graveyard here. Do they just win? Oh, nice. They said good game. I I wasn't sure what that exactly meant. No, nobody lost yet. Uh, they get to draw some cards here, which is sweet, but it doesn't make make them the winner by any means. Um, so we play land out. Let's play this. Let's go ahead and get rid of Yarok here. Okay. Uh, we also have the Elspeth Conqueror's Death to get rid of this at some point. Garuda. Okay. Sure. They got another Garuda. That's pretty good. Um, eventually, we just get to Kaya's Wrath, so like I kind of don't care that much about this. Spark Double. So they're going to be able to get Thassa down. As in online. Uh, fiddle Tip. Sure. Or they could take, like, an Elite Guard Mage. That's probably better. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we just get to Kaya's Wrath. We need a black source, but, like, it's fine. Uh, we're not going to block. We're going to take it. We get to Garuda again. Sure. They hit a Fibblethip on their side and a General's Enforcer. Not all that exciting. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Unfortunately, that's a big no. Um, alright, well, we play out the general. Um, we'll exile that. It's not gonna matter too much. Uh, I think we just probably lose, but we'll say no attacks. Uh, we don't necessarily lose, right? Like, we actually get the opportunity to... That's pretty good. Another fibble tip. Okay. It's cool. I like this. I like the fact that they're capitalizing on Garuda despite being a Yorian deck. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. That was not as bad of an attack as I thought it would be. Alright, if we get a black source, we have a shot. What did they hit on my side? Another enforcer. That's fine. Oh, they just got Leaf Kindred. Okay. Oh, and they get to do it twice. Nice. Sure. I don't know how many black sources we actually have left. Oh. Oh, what a tease. <laughs> what a tease. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. I think we just pass. We get to block and then... Uh, use the general's ability so we mitigate the damage but I think we just lose anyway we'll see we will see six seven wow okay yeah we'll concede well done um, not worth fighting that one out they were gonna mill us so there was no reason to but hey regardless I think we did okay with this deck. Uh, Esper Humans, a little bit of a different strategy, but I really, really like it. Uh, I'm enjoying this deck quite a lot. Um, did we hit our mastery yet? No. How many? How much more do we need? We're almost there. Uh, should not have actually clicked on it. Um, okay. Well, regardless, uh, there we go. We need 50 more. We'll get it in the next video. Um, so 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure, of course, to leave a like or a comment down below and always make sure to subscribe if you are not already. Stay tuned. Very soon, we'll hopefully be doing a Corset 2021 bundle giveaway. Very excited about that. Uh, and uh, until then, or until the next video at least, I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching, guys.